Gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Red and Blue review. Thank God it's the final one of the season, especially after that stuff just now. A very warm welcome to you, every, wherever you are watching. Sorry, we're, sorry we are a little bit late. Um, I'm your host, Nick Shawpot, and as you can see on screen, as always, I'm joined by Joe Holyoke from what looks like his love wagon. Is that your love wagon you're in? Your passion well, wagon? It's my van. Yeah, your passion uh, wagon, right. And I've had to drive to Petswood to just, <laughs> just to be able to do this show, because otherwise I was just going to smash my computer up. Even though it's not my computer's fault, it's this awful software. But anyway. Yeah, anyway. And glad and to be you, here. Well, nice to have you back, mate, because we haven't seen you for a little while. So welcome aboard. And also, as you can see... For the first time in the Red and Blue Review history, we've gone with an entire family. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure and Joel's pleasure to introduce to you the Gilbert family. Now, uh, on the right, you can see Dad uh, Lee. Right in the background, give us a wave, Mum, Kells. Then there's Ben and Caitlin. Welcome to the show, guys. How are you doing? Good, thank you. All good. All good. You, your family must be the one of the most travelled Palace fans in the country. Lee, how many games have you been to this season, mate? Um, what, pre-lockdown? Yeah. Missed the first game of the season, Everton at home. I was on holiday. Guys, that is a fantastic effort. OK, let's, let's put you on the spot, Caitlin. OK, I'll come to you first. Your favourite game so far this year? Um... Hmm. Maybe West Ham at home. Oh, really? I think, yeah. Well, it's just for IU's goal, wasn't it? Yeah. I was going to say IU's winner again. Yeah. yeah. Super. Oh. Ben, your favourite player, please. Your favourite current squad player. You um, um, and IU. Really? Top scorer, he's, getting, he's, he's ended top scorer this year, mate. So, great choice. So, are you over somebody like Zaha, who, who would be lots of people's favourite? Yeah. Kels, your, your, your favourite game of the season so far? Um, I think it's got to be the West Ham one. West Ham, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. West Ham at home as well, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I must admit, it... it Filled me with. I've got lots of West Ham mates. You've probably got West Ham friends up all over the place as well, and they weren't very happy with us this year, were they? So let's get on and tell them everybody what we're going to be talking about. So, don't you want to ask me my favourite game of the season? Well, go on, Ed. It's got to be Brighton, I would think. No, 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 no. Bournemouth at home. Why? For what it meant. Shaco sent off early doors. Schlupp's winner. Backs against the wall. And it was. Um, a right determined performance, I thought. Well, put it like this. If you get to the end of the game and Roy Hodgson's fist, punch, fist punching all the players as they come off the pitch, it must mean something, mustn't it? Well, he was doing that tonight as well. But I wonder if that was actually a fist pump to say goodbye. We'll come on to that later during the show. So coming up during the show this evening, uh, we will be talking about, uh, obviously, the final game of the season, the Spurs at home draw at Sellers Park. Uh, we all thought it was going to be another defeat, but we had managed to snatch a, a draw. Uh, will, will this be the final goodbye to Hodson, Zaha, Ben Teke, Sacco and a few others? Lee's sitting there praying. We'll be talking about the incomings, including uh, Ferguson has already signed and reports in the press of at least one other that may have been done, just not announced yet, and potential other ones. That's coming up during the show. We'll have, have questions from the audience. Uh, Nigel Crouch has been very busy. But before we start, get on with the show, ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching out there, and I can't see at the moment how many people are watching out there, can you do me a favour? Can you please hit the share button on Facebook and start your own watch party to allow as many people as watch, is watching on your wall to come and join us. Come and say hello. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, YouTube, at any time to listen, watch or download any of our podcasts or simply ask your Alexa. Please play the latest Red and Blue Review podcast or go to redandbluereview.co.uk for all the links. So let's have a conversation. We are the only podcast you can watch. So, guys, 
Uh, Ian, I, I know you're in, uh, I've got producer Ian in the background. I don't know if it's possible, Ian. Have you got a, a picture of the, today's lineups? I'd like to start off with the lineups because, oh, we have, as indeed. Gel, lineups today, because we are injury ravaged, okay? Uh, Guaita, Ward, Dan, Coate, Young Mitchell, who oh, I want to talk about, God. Townsend, MacArthur, McCarthy, Schlupp, Ayu, and Zaha up top. Uh, okay, and so he left people if like it's just me that's left. Kelly on the bench, um, and also who else was on the bench? Um, Milivojevic, of course, captain. Gel, your thoughts on that lineup, please. Yeah, I thought it was strong. Gel. Um, hello, yeah, drop that picture down, mate, please, because I've, I've lost Gel. Gel's disappeared. Can you? No, can't see him. Can it, uh, I can least... see you, Gel. Can you see Gel? Well, Gel's disappeared from my screen again. So that lineup, I know, I know we're injury ravaged at the back. I mean, basically, it's a replacement back for Lee. Uh, your thoughts? Would would you have done anything different? A bit strange. I noticed that Kelly was on the bench and he didn't start with Kelly. Uh, what, 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 why not? Why not give Sam Woods a run out at centre back alongside Scott Dan? And mate, I couldn't disagree with you more. I mean, the, the, I think that most of Palace faithful. Uh, crying out for him to try the youngsters. Wouldn't that have been a little bit of a risk with young oh. Mitchell on the, in the back four already? I mean, I, I saw Sam Woods against um, Colchester um, in the Caribo Cup. I think he played right back. Looked quite decent to me. And unfortunately, unless you give these players game time, you're never going to see, are you? You're never going to see how they're going to improve. The way they're and that is the problem with Hodgson. It? It's, it's always... He won't, he won't roll the dice, Nick. Uh, and Kells, I'm going to ask you that question. Um, he was forced into using Mitchell the other night. He was forced into using Mitchell with the injury of uh, Van Arnold again this week. Um, would you have put, would you have risked uh, another new starter like Woods in the back four? Yeah, definitely. They need to be given the chance. Um, as they said, if they're not given the chance, they're not going to get more experience. We had nothing to lose. We weren't going to go anywhere in the table, so why not give them a chance? Ben and, ben and Caitlin, I'm asking you jointly here, so I don't mind who answers. How do you think uh, young Mitchell did? Um, I mean, it's only been a couple of games that he's been playing because he hasn't really been, hasn't had the choice whether he's playing or not because obviously PVA has been injured. But I mean, I think he's, I've been okay since he's been in. Yeah. Ben, you got any thoughts? I think he's much better today than when he was against Wolves. So I don't think he had a... He played with right, but I don't think he had a good, good game against Wolves. But I thought like he really stepped up today. Yeah, he was, he was, up, he was up against... What's that guy's name? Is it Trore? He was uh, up against... The, yeah. What, for Wolves, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that bloke is a phenomenal player. Uh, and yeah, he did get a little bit exposed... Um, but this is what we're saying, Nick. You, you're not going to get better. You're not going to get um, show what you can do unless you get a run of games. And this is the thing. And if you if you if you take your point, Lee, back to last or the season before last, when we were desperate for a, a, a right back and Aaron Wambasaka came in, look what happened to him. You know, by playing the youth, okay, it, we unearthed this gem. I'm not saying for one minute that I think Mitchell's going to be anywhere near the same category, or Woods in your case, or any of the ones we've got on our current list crop of youngsters. But you're not going to know, as you quite rightly said, until until such time you play the, these guys. I can appreciate it's a risk, and obviously it's, and it's very hard to break through when you're in the Premiership. I can appreciate that. And these youngsters probably will get more game time, game time lower down the leagues. But mix them in a little bit. You, sometimes you've got to be a bit brave. Okay. Um, Gel, apparently, can you, Lee, again, can you still see Gel? I can, yeah. Okay, Gel, you need to drop out and come back in again, mate, because I can't see you. Uh, it, I'm sure Ian's working hard in the background to sort that out. I know, you're, I know you're there because you're talking to me in the chat, but I can't see you. So uh, I'm going to carry on with the Gilberts, if you don't mind. Gilberts, are you happy to be stars of the show tonight instead of just guests? Yeah, go away. Yeah, let's get uh, it. So, first half, how did you think? Talk me through what you thought about the first half. Uh, I'll give you a quick overview if you like. Um, I thought for the first, Joe, you're back. 
I can see you, mate. Hello, dude. Um, Lee, first first twenty minutes, pretty poor showing, yeah. Yeah, it was really. I mean, we came into it more after the water break, the silly water break in the first half. Um, I was actually surprised by Tottenham, to be honest with you. Um, well, they to me, they just seem to allow us, like we do when we play away, they seem to play our game. They allowed us to have all the possession. And I think they made us look better than what we actually were. I mean, we had loads of possession, but we didn't really create much chances, really. No. Uh, they seem to, maybe it's the Mourinho way, they just seem to sit back and allow you to put the pressure on. Um, which is not like the Tottenham, Tottenham size under Pochettino, was it? No, absolutely. Kells, the, um, the Harry Kane goal, uh, that was something a little bit special, wasn't it? It was. I, think, I don't think anyone would have said that. I thought it was really good. <laughs> Very clinical. Yeah. We got, no one, we got no one who could finish a goal like that. We don't know. We're going to come on to that. Later in the show, mate, because you're, you know, there's going to be something hopefully we're going to address during transfer window with a bit of luck. Gel, <laughs> after they scored, they Tottenham were, Lee said something about it during the post show, oh, the pre show, that actually he was disappointed with them. Um, they actually allowed us time to grow, time to play, do you not think? And we played, played ourselves back into the game after the water break. Well, I did think we played all right. I mean, I, I, I don't think we showed them. As much respect as what we've shown probably every other team that's come to sell us, you know. I mean, if we if we'd have if we'd have had a go at Burnley, like like we've had a go at Tottenham today, we could have caused something out of that game. But like I said, I, you know, I, I said in the tweet a little while back, I think I just had this feeling with certain players are just literally ignoring Hodgson. I think you have to. I think I think your your creative and natural flair players just have to ignore him because. Um. You know, otherwise it just the the the, the performance is just turned into you know turgid like defence versus attack battles, and 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 I've said this for years. I've said this, you know, it's been the same under loads of managers. It just seems to be that the more experienced managers we get, are, are just solely, absolutely uh, resolute on defence, defence, defence. And then counter attack, and that we've got a better side than that. We have a much better side than that, and we showed against Man United that they attack us, we attack them. You know, we, I, I thought we were as good as Man United. I thought we were definitely, definitely as good as Spurs today. You know, that all, all it, all it showed was with Kane is that they have uh, certain players, uh, you know, like Kane who are just clinical. Yeah. Now. Now, now the, the, the thing about uh, about Kane it is, you know, he's England captain, but he's also the England centre forward. And you, to be honest with you, you're not going to be the England centre forward for no reason. You know, he is very good. Now, you tell me if you think Ben Teke, in his prime, oh, go back, I don't care, when he played at Liverpool, when he was good at Villa or whatever, right? You tell me Ben Teke would have scored a goal like that. Never, ever, ever. He can't, he didn't do it then. I haven't seen anything like that. And he can't do it now. So, and we're reliant on him. And, and the irony, the, 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 oh, the irony of today, we've got Mitchell flying down the left, flinging in crosses that, that Ben Teke, well, maybe three years ago, would have, you know, they scored that trick today. But, you know, we just, we're toothless up front. We're trying to, we're trying to play, um, are we trying to like, play a, a little bit like Barcelona did when they just didn't use forwards? He's like seven midfield players and, f- and three out and three defenders. I just I'm I'm confused to the point where I actually don't care for anything that Hodgson says or does. I hope the players the last couple of games have literally just ignored him and gone out and done what they've done what they wanted it, to do. You raise a good point about Mitchell slinging crosses in uh, Gilbert family. I'm coming to you now. Um, don't mind who answers this, but the other thing uh, I did notice, and Joe, I want you to. Talk to me about the two Jimmys in a minute in midfield. But Gilbert, something I picked up on today that I hadn't seen for a while now is Joel Ward getting beyond the last man on more than one occasion down that right-hand side and getting balls into the box. The stuff that Joel was just alluding to, that Ben Seke should would have normally been feeding off if he was on the bloody pitch. I thought Joel Ward had an extraordinary game today. Do you not agree? 
he was getting forward. Um, and yeah, he can he can ping a ball across. Um, but, but I I do think he he'd be one of the ones that'll be replaced in the summer. Really, I, I, I just think he gets exposed against pace. Yeah, pace has never been his strength. We know that. I mean, you know, up against strength, but um, he must be close to a testimonial season. Um, so, who would who would you play at right back then, Lee? Ferguson. Is it, you think he's ready for the Premier League? He's, he's had a good season in the Championship. Uh, he's coming back from a major injury. You reckon he's ready? Well, pre-season to tell us, wasn't it, a lot? But um, well, well, we'll never know, will we? I mean, Aaron wan was thrown in. He only played 40 games for us, didn't he? How many games did he play for us before Man United bought him? Shit, he, he played seven games in his first season. He had the last seven games and he was up against Chelsea, Man United, Arsenal, uh, Tottenham. He, Yeah, I mean, he literally was, and, and Liverpool, because he gave the penalty away against Liverpool, got sent off. Uh, yeah, no, he got sent off against Liverpool. But oh. he got literally thrown in the deep end. And I like the way you're thinking. If we don't shuck our players in the deep end, the deep end is the Premier League. There are no is. really crap teams in there, well, apart from Norwich this year. So we're only marginally better than him. The, the, the only thing, and this is, I'm not very good at probably putting this across. This is the problem we've got with uh, any manager managing in the Premiership. We all like the longevity and the, and, and the contingency plan of bringing youth players through, through. Managers in the Premiership is very much a results business. They need to get results. So, therefore, it's all about the here and now. You know, it's no point saying to a manager, um, it doesn't matter if you lose the first 10 games, as long as we can see some youngsters that are coming through. Because nine times out of 10, they're going to lose their job. So, therefore... As, as, as fans, we can buy into what we want and we want to see youngsters coming through. A manager is never going to really buy into that because it's the here and now for them. It's a results business. And that's the problem. Which is, which is why I think we need a younger forward-thinking manager who's willing to come in and build a young side rather than trying to build a side that's just going to literally struggle to stay in the Premier League year in, year out. And that's exactly what Stoke did. And I can say, do you know what? When, when we went up, I went, I just want to be Stoke. I, I, I said it. I, you know, loads of people go, ah, you, you know, you, you said this and you said that. And I, did, I said, I, honestly, I just want to be Stoke. Well, we're about to go into our eighth, eighth year. Yeah. And I, I think that we are going to do what, if we carry on the way we are, you know, we will do a Stoke, and we will, and we will go down, because you know we've got, we, we've got uh, the aging players we've got are, are so lacking in pace. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just think we need a younger manager, someone who who is willing to take a chance on younger players, um, and maybe, and 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 maybe take some advice off of older. You know the the old an older manager sitting in the background, an ex manager. Uh, you know, I think Hodgson has got to let go. Um, and and I had this conversation I can't remember with someone in in the week. You know, people said, "Oh, we can't afford." You know, whoever it was, I think it was maybe another podcast said, "We can't afford to get rid of Hodgson." Well, as it happens, we can afford to get rid of Hodgson because up until about four months ago, that's when his Liverpool contract ended. That's when they finished paying him. So people don't you don't go. Oh, we will pay his contract off. Very rarely is someone to come forward and go, there's 1.8 million quid. Thanks, but off you go. They go, we'll just give you your 25 grand a week for the next four years. And that's what happens. So when they get keep getting fired, I mean, Pardew must be on an absolute fortune. You know, I think his contract with Newcastle has just come up. I think he's had four jobs, hasn't he, since then? But, yeah, you know it, it's it, it is what it is. But we we to go forward, literally to go forward, we have to bring the age of our team down by seven or eight years. We can have a cut. We, for me, got to keep Gary Cale. Got to keep Gary Cale. Um, but, but after that, I really can't see. You know, I just would like to have a, a mixture of youth and and Riedeveld. Riedeveld has to take the place of Luka Milivojevic. He, he, he has to. 
You see the way what he was doing today with his left foot, right foot, flicks, being busy, going to the ball, not waiting for the ball, being able to pass, being able to pass, being able to get a bit of time, stick his head up. He never looks hurried, never looks hurried on the ball. He never looks hurried. You know no. why? Because he came through a system, an oh, absolute yeah. classic proven system at Ajax. That guy has played in, in, in a major European final, but he isn't good enough for Hodgson. Honestly, yeah. makes how, me sick. How does he, how does James McCarthy get the nod above Riedeveld? James McCarthy is just not good enough for Crystal Palace. No, you know, you're right. And it, again, it's just because he's a solid player. But what he is, I mean, the only thing I can think about McCarthy is that he gets booked virtually every single game. He must give a quarter of his wages back in fines. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. But I, I, I'm just, we, we cannot, so we did, literally did, cannot have a team full, full of did, defensive midfielders. Well, how did the two Jimmys perform today, did you think? Well, I thought McCarthy was better than McCarthy. And he took McCarthy off. And I was like... <laughs> Like, what's the code with that? You know, MacArthur didn't get booked today. He always gets booked. Yeah. But that's only because he's a hustler, bustler, box to box. See, you know? I, 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 I don't think McCarthy must be dead on his feet. He's played every single... I mean, Hodgson needs to... I think he needs to be taken out for a couple of games just to give him a break. I mean, these eight, these nine games, these um, lockdown games, whatever they want to call them, you know... He, his legs must be weigh tons. He hasn't stopped. Yeah, I don't. I I, I really don't know. Oh, Caitlin, who would you have, McCarthy or McCarthy? Mm, I think McCarthy. He's not done that great since he's coming because I think with Roy, he puts players that they don't play in their actual position. Where McCarthy, he does try his best and he does work hard in every game that he plays. So I'd probably say McCarthy. Yes, without a doubt. Yeah. And Ben, have you got any thoughts? Um, McCarthy, like, because we're playing too many defensive midfielders. Yes, he is, like, defensive, but he does attack a bit more than the rest of them. And then when he does find himself in the middle sometimes, you can't put a 70s ball in the box for the players. Or he was playing. Kels, you got any thoughts on the two Jimmys in the middle? Uh, James McCarthy is just, as Jill said, he's just like there to get a booking of every, nearly every game. We can't really be having players doing that because we've got Luca doing get the book, quite a good. Good and point. Just, we can't be having it. You can't be losing these players if they're going to just keep on getting booked. So players get booked half the time because they're not good enough, and they, they Luke, get Luke is your example. Yeah, they get booked by getting themselves out of trouble, and lunging in, or when they get caught. We've had MacArthur gets booked virtually, gets booked all the time because he's hustle and bustle and does put he does put himself about. McCarthy gets booked a lot. Kuarte gets booked a lot. Benteke gets booked a lot. Wolf gets booked because of his shit attitude. Um, I, I, I mean, at that booking for for Tyrick today, I, I was amazed by that. That was a that was such an innocuous challenge, um, and he he hadn't got away from him. He had not got away from him, uh, Lucas. I, I just but but our our uh, yeah our bookings have definitely increased over the last couple of years. I mean, every time Luca just looks like he's a, a red card in the, in in the making every game. And the one red card that I can remember is the Sacco incident you, you, you spoke about, Lee. Yeah, you, it was borderline whether that was even a red card. Right, was... that's, can I just say something about that, Nick? Now, now yes, the mate. other thing is right with that Sacco thing. Jordan Henderson did a a, a tackle very very similar to that. A few weeks back, yeah. it wasn't even a yellow card. No, so it, it that literally. Completely, I think, not literally, is a, a case of who you play for, whether you get away with those or not. I mean, it might have been a, a, a yellow card for, for, I don't know what it would have been a yellow card for, because he won the ball. You know, it's just the it, referees nowadays, I, I just I just think they have an agenda. Um, 
but yeah, it, it, our, our yellow card situation is, is getting worse and worse. And as, but, as Ian just pointed out, Alexander Arnold did, this, did something very similar uh, and, he, and, he, and he didn't get penalised for it. Right, Joe, give us a, uh, just a, I don't think too much. I mean, Palace played a lot better and we pushed them back in the second half. Um, did, your thoughts on the second half overall? Yeah, uh, and again, just to repeat what I've been saying for three or four years now, um, with the players that we that we have and have and have had, uh, our best form of defence is attack. There's just no two ways about it. It literally is, you know. And 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 I I wouldn't mind a, a, a sort of a, a gung ho manager, but someone to 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 take us at teams rather than just be sit and sit there and get picked off by the by the better teams. So, but I, I thought that that when we attack them. I thought we looked as dangerous as them, apart from quite literally when it got, when it got down to the having no one in the middle to be clinical. To, you know that, that that's all we're missing. That is literally all we're missing is is someone clinical in the middle, and it, and it's a real shame because I think we could have had more than a point today if we'd have uh, if we'd have had someone more clinical. Lee? But I, I, I thought that, I thought we matched them today. I really did. It was good performance. Just, just alluding to a point that Gel just picked up there, where he said about he'd like a gung ho manager. We had that a little bit with Pardew, didn't we? I was thinking the same when he said it. Yeah, carry on, mate. Would you, would you go, would you, would you advocate somebody like that? You know, you'd rather win games five four than you know, a boring. No, 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 no. I, 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 I was there at Swansea away. I mean, I, 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 you know, to go to go into what was it injury time. And what? Four, four, three up. Going, four, three up. Four, three yeah. up. Going into injury time and losing the game. So it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? You know what I mean, it's the old, old story again. You get, you get what you, you know, be careful what you wish for. Whereas under Hodgson, we wouldn't have lost that game. That's just, yeah. I mean, it's... So Lee, talk us through, talk us through our goal, please. Um, Jeffrey Schlup. Yeah. Well, it's only our second goal from the corners all year, for all season. Oh, God. Across the second goal from a corner. You no, know, that's a great stat, and I hadn't picked up on that. There you go. Say the second one. So the cross to Dan, great header down by Dan. Oh, you made a bit of a sort of, I don't know, uh, slight hit. Fell to, re- uh, fell to Schlup, and obviously Schlup, we all know Schlup can finish. He has got one, some sort of, um, he has got a good, good foot on him. Um, but yeah, it's only the second goal from corner all season. Yeah, set, you know, that, that is a, that's a shocking statistic, really, isn't it? Uh, bloody awful, Joe. Uh, Schlup, he was skating on ice in the box. Schlup, sorry, I was skating on ice in the box uh, be, before uh, Schlup he rescued him. I put up, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, are you? Although he's been our top scorer, and we have, there's no doubting that he has given us many points this season. Without his points. You know, without the points that he literally won by himself, you know, either the where we would we getting battered as such. But the West Ham game was all Jordan Ayu. It was him that won us that game, and so I can't be massively critical of him because he's he's been amazing in a in a in a pretty crap season. Um, but he just he doesn't have any vision. He's so. Do you know what? I, it, I, I was talking, talking to my mate about this earlier, right? If he played in my football team, I am absolutely sure I would have hoofed him. I would have kicked him to get the ball off him. I'd have tackled him myself. <laughs> because he just he just runs down blind alleys. He doesn't see. There was a, four or five times where he could have played a forward pass and put someone in today. In, well, not, not in on goal, but in behind a defender. And then had he... Had he he could have made that pass and then legged it into the area and maybe got on the end or something, but he just doesn't have that. Mind you, I, I suppose that's because we, you know, he's two and a half million quid. Is that? So is I, can't that re- I can't really say anything. Then, can I? Is that? Is that what you're alluding to, Angel? Are you saying he frustrates me, Lee? He frustrates not, me. He could be so much more of a player. So he's not an intelligent player. I don't think he is. No, I don't think he is. For me. I think he's a very selfish player who doesn't think about the team, and you can see the frustration on on, especially with Wilf. I'm but saying that, you know, I see Wilf, and today I'm sure he was having another guard walled. 
I think he was having another. I'm sure them two, they, they don't get on. I really think that they don't get on. But, you know, um, just Jordan, if he could just get his head up a little bit, and he, he would be such a so much more of a of a of a better player because I, I, you know without him this season, I think we'd be gone. So I can't again, can't be too too hard critical, on him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you, I know it's a slightly different position, but if you want to, if you want to sort of give an example of an intelligent footballer who linked up well with Wilf, is Ruben Loftus Cheek. Now that is an intelligent footballer. That is an intelligent footballer. Do you agree, Joe? Yeah, but he's forty million quid. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, you know, if you, yeah. no, 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 I agree. Yeah, it, I, could, I completely we, agree. We could have bought Loftus Cheek for twelve million, but we wanted to take him on loan first to see how it panned out. The bottom well, line, like, the loan was a success, and obviously Chelsea moved the goalposts, and there you go. I think with that, though, was that he'd played like one in four games of his Chelsea career. I think he was injury. I just yeah. think he needed to be in a different environment to start enjoying his football. I think once you enjoy your football, you seem to be injured less when things are going well for you. You know you're going to get picked. You know, he's in. He, he's a, a very small fish. Even now, a very small fish in a big pond at Chelsea. You know, they have, the majority of their players are not, they're world class. As much yep. as a lot of people don't like Chelsea, they're world class. And at the moment, Ruben isn't world class. He's a very, very, very good player. But, you know, he's in a team full of, of massive internationals. And he looked, um, him and Wilf together look massive. You know, they look great. The same as when Maya and Wilf get together down the left hand side, they look great. They were, they, uh, why didn't we? Why didn't we roll the dice today, Nick, and, and throw my one and actually go for the win, mate? Do you know what? I had the same sort. I, I, I had the same Lucron instead. Lou, uh, Lee, I had the same sort. Even in the first half, when we were one nil down, we, it was calling out for somebody to push forward a little bit. Luca would have been the wrong move. Uh, Maya would have been the right move because he's more of an attacking sort. I see what boys. I'm just going to do some stats. Then we're going to move away from the game, if you don't mind, because I've got lots of other stuff I want to cover with you. And I'm conscious of we're taking up your Sunday night. So, uh, statistics. Full-time possession. Uh, Palace 47, Spurs 53. Shots, Palace had 13. Spurs had seven. Um, on target, uh, Palace had two. And Spurs had two. Uh, Palace corners. Palace had seven corners. Is that right? Seven yeah, corners? Yeah, he probably uh, did. Uh, and Spurs two. Fouls 11 on for Palace and 13 uh, for Spurs. Uh, final score at Sellers Park 1 1. Those, those stats are a little bit cut down the middle, the same as the result. End of season. Joe, you're about, I can see you're about to say something. Who did the stats for shots for us? Mr. Rose Tinted Spectacles. <laughs> well, that's, 13? That's Jesus. What said. Yeah, didn't really? He? Yeah, don't forget that. It was, there was 13 shots and how many of them were on target? Probably two, I think it was. Um, well, Schlup, right. Schlup, Schlup had two, didn't he? Okay, 50%, uh, mate. Somebody <laughs> asked in the chat. So, okay, you, you, you raised it. I mean, I want to talk about uh, the, the ones that are going to be leaving us shortly. But talk to me about Jeffrey Schlup, all of you. Guys in the background, uh, Ben, uh, Kells, your thoughts on Schlup since he's been back from his injury? Caitlin? Um, I think today he has been a bit better. Um, needs more games, I think. Um, match fitness as well. He's just, I mean, he was, before his injury, he was scoring goals. He was doing really well. Came back not as great as he was before. I thought. I, I mean, I think your. I think your point about um, match fitness is well made, Caitlin. Um, but I, he actually out Kells. I thought today, out of the whole squad, uh, of all of them on the pitch, he looked the, really the one hungry, had a bit of desire to actually put the ball away or make something happen up top. That's what he brings to to the team. Do you not think? Yeah, I think we missed him when he was out injured. So he's come back with more hungry to play and that. And it's a shame that we've actually come to the end of the season because I think he would have really got on with coming up, come up, come better. Yeah. Um, but I think we have really missed him. 
Ben, he's a good squad player, isn't he not? Um, yeah. Well, obviously, when he did come off the bench, whatever, like, before he got injured, not that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. You usually, like, if you need your goal, he'd pop up with a goal and get us out the win or something. I get enough to equalise it today. He, he's always got a goal in him, Nick, hasn't he? Mate, Ben, you just you just thrown me under the bus here with another great point because I'm telling you now, uh, what I haven't got is um, uh, Schlappi's goal tally for the season. He comes off the bench and he's always available to put the ball in the net. And you know what? Cracking point. Uh, yeah, he must be, if he's not our second top scorer this season, he's probably our third top scorer. Great point. Right, let's move on. Just quickly, Nick, did you see Schlupp's face when he got substituted today? When he yes. got taken? He did not look happy. No, no. I, I think he had that look of, really? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, having, well, I'm, I'm having a better game. game. You've been playing worse than me. Exactly that. Exactly that. Right, okay, let's, go, let's talk about... Right, we're going to talk about who we're going to say goodbye to following today's game. And I've got right. a list here. I've got a list here. And we're going to go through them one by one. Hodson, Zaha, yes. Ben yes. Seke, and yes. Saka. And I know Saka didn't yes. play today. Uh, Right, Gilberts, Roy Hodson. I know the answer to this because I've already asked you pre-show. Hodson in or Hodson out? Out. 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 Ladies and gentlemen. Four, four outs. That's, you, you have a unanimous decision. Okay, I better do the other one as well. Holy Oak. <laughs> in or out? Out. Okay, so. What about you, Nick? <sighs> right. I'll tell you what I actually think. No, in or okay. out. No, in or out. No, out. In or out. Out, out, out. There you but go. That's it then. Next question. I, I have... <laughs> I, I said when he first got appointed, I was under-enthused about... So it's out. Royal it's team. out with a caveat, yeah? Uh, no, no, no. It's out. It's out. It's staying out. It's staying. <laughs> Shut up, you. Okay, so on that subject then, if he was to go now, okay, who would you replace him? Benny Miley's only just signed a one-year extension to his contract. Who would you sign, Gilbert? Do, do you know what this is going to? This and this isn't me sitting on the fence or anything. At the moment, I don't. I don't care. I just yeah. don't care. I just want a new voice, someone different, fresh ideas, someone who's going to start bringing some younger players through, oh, okay. someone not so stale, just someone who's got a bit of ambition and isn't just sort of. Ticking off the days until they're going to call it a day themselves. I just want, but I do want a younger manager. But I don't really, I, honestly, Nick, I don't really care anymore. Caitlin, you were saying something while your dad was talking to I think it's like what you're saying, we need a, a younger manager because at this rate, I want Roy to go, I don't really care who comes in. But you also need someone that's got character, character as well because every game you just see. Roy at the touchline, talking to himself, playing with his hair, just not doing anything. <laughs> you need someone that's got character about him, someone, someone that's got personality and just not going to just stand there. Bit of passion. Ian, Ian has just said in the chat, would you accept Dougie Freeman? Yes. Mm. Oh, uh, oh uh, why not? I wouldn't be against it. Gel, Dougie Freeman? For you? Oh, I could get pelters for this, but do you know what? Yeah, but, but based only on the fact that he does like to bring young players in. Um, but but I, I I honestly think that he need does need someone with a with a stronger hand, you know, like a like a an, an Allardyce, a a Dyche. I, I I think the players. Do you know what? Let, let me. I need to digress just a little bit. You know, I know a few players, or ex-players now, and they always said to me that that all their lives they were told what to do. They literally told what to do, and and, and that's the life of a, of a footballer from when you're a kid. Do this, play like this. I want you to do this, do that. You don't do it, you don't play. So they do it right. And the thing is, I can't see Roy intimidating Wilf. I can't see Roy intimidating PVA, Schlup, MacArthur, McCarthy, Tompkins. Can't see him. Benteke. He, he, he can get respect, <laughs> but respect 
Ainge, Ainge being being forced into it because this is what it's you go like that. Look, it's my idea, you do it. And if you don't do it, you ain't playing. And eventually what happens is the players buy into it and become better if it works, or if they don't, then you start losing and your manager gets sacked. So, you know, it's you know, we had we had we would we were dire for large parts of the season and then put that four or five game run together where we got enough points to get us to mid table. We needed that one more win, got us to safety, got we basically got him off the hook of absolutely crap performances, underperforming, massively underperforming players. And I've got I, I will say now that he that Roy Hodgson, his tactics and whatever his team talks are, of turns, potentially our most exciting team, uh, uh, literally one of the best teams that I think what I could possibly see if they were all on their game in, in, in all the years I've been going now into one that was devoid of ideas, devoid of passion, devoid of, of just putting in lackluster wage-collecting performances, bringing in season internationals, and only one of them, Gary Cahill, is going to going to headbutt someone's foot. I mean, Tiki is not going to dive into someone's foot. It doesn't. I, I, it, we've got too many players that are just there on on experience, and every now and then they do just enough. And that's what's happened this season. Don't ever look at it any other way. We have done just that's enough. enough. And, right? and, and, I, I and, think... and 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 after seven years, that is not good enough. That is not good enough. And and Parrish once said, right, if you don't if you don't uh uh build on the squad and invest in the squad, you end up going sideways. And we've been going sideways by three expensive signings. Well two expensive, two twenty odd million thirty million pound and a twenty odd million pound signings. And all the rest of them have been average. He actually said going backwards is what he actually said. Lee, you wanted to say Oh, there you go. I just just a little bit of what I what I alluded to earlier on with you and Ian on the on Nick. Um I asked the question in the gel really, which was name me one Crystal Palace player who has improved under Roy Hodgson. Yeah, no. There's none. And a good coach, a good manager, improves players. You know, Jurgen Klopp, you know, just for a, a good manager or a coach improves players. I tell you what we the fan base is guilty of because of Roy Hodgson's age, 73 next month, there's a sort of sympathetic vote for him as well. And that is going to come against us. People go, Oh, it's Roy, you know, he's been around. We need to be lovely bloke. Yeah. And that's people would feel differently. People would feel differently if Roy Hodgson was 50 or 48 or 55. But because he's 73 next month, people sort of feel, oh, we can't sack him. It's good old Roy. And that is the problem. End of the day, he's on a good salary. He's there to do a job, regardless of age. I don't care whether he's 21, 22, 23 or 81. He's not doing it. The club's going sideways. And I guarantee if Roy Hodgson is our manager next season, we're going to swell down that plug hole. OK, so... Can, can, I, can I just say one more thing? Only because I haven't seen it. I've seen a big reaction on Twitter tonight about it. What did Hodgson say about Wilf today, our uh, po- um, uh, post match? Right, hold that thought. I'm coming to that next. Okay. Oh, sorry. Do- okay. We're, no, that's all right. We're going to do Zaha next. But the other thing that you guys and uh, Gilbert's in the background as well. I'm actually talking to you. The one, the one thing that nobody's really mentioned is uh, to who to replace. Um, and there's been two or three different reports in the press overnight that Palace are moving for Sean Dyche. Uh, so I'm just going to read you one quote that I had here. Crystal Palace are eyeing Burnley, Burnley manager Sean Dyche for their next boss, with Roy Hodgson facing the chop. It's believed that Palace chairman and part owner Steve Parrish is stepping up plans for the change after a horror run of seven defeats, coupled with no games in the last no goals in the last three games, says the Daily Mirror. Hodson, 72, is under the microscope with Palace facing Tottenham at the centre part today. Now, my first thought was, why would he want to come? And we, had, we did talk about this on the show a couple of weeks ago. Why would he come to Palace, number one? Okay. Number two, the reason he's not happy at Burnley 
is because he'd fallen out with his trading board with reference to uh, them lack of transfer and transfer funds available. Well, why would he come to Palace to, to do the same thing? And then I found out after that, after i had done a little bit of research on it, he's local. He's actually more local than people realise. They all think he's an Northerner. Okay, living up in Burnley, happy, happy. No, he's not. He actually lives in Northampton. Okay, he lives nearer the Beckenham training ground than he does Burnley. So perhaps there is an opportunity for somebody like Sean Dyche. Kels, how do you feel about Sean Dyche? I'd be happy with him coming in. Um, as long as the, he's backed, given money, um, and brings younger players through, I think he'd be a good fit for us. And it's, uh, yeah, Ian's just asked a question, as you were speaking there, Ian just asked a question in the chat. Yeah, he would be good because he would actually encourage the academy, would he not, guys? Yeah, I think he would. Um, he needs to. That's why we've got that category. Uh, category, category one. one. That, that, is, that is obviously the bigger plan. Joe, Sean Dice for you? Uh, yeah, well, I, w- I wouldn't be averse to it. Um, I, I, I think he would be. I mean, the way that he's got average players like you know, like Ben Mee and Chris Wood and and other players that are sort of were uh, were so called has beens. Uh, he's got them playing as a as a team and scoring goals and and just their just their attitude. The, the thing is, I, our, we need a change. The club style, every you know, right the way through the, the fan base is. He's split. You know, I've never seen our, fra- our our fan base more fractious than what it is on so many different, uh, so many different subjects. So for me, yeah, I'd, I'd take Daesh. Um, but but there are uh, as a caveat, and I, again, going to start using that word because I think it's going to be. Um, it, it, we need to. I think we need to. Uh, we're going to talk about Wilf in a minute, but that will be yeah, part yeah. of what I need to say. All right. But yeah, Daesh, yes, with caveats. Okay, right. Wilfred Zaha. Now, according to the Twitter and the press tonight, uh, Hodgson said in his post-match press conference, uh, he still wants to leave the club. Um, Gel, did we see Wilf in his uh, last time in the Palace shirt today? Do you know what? And this is going to sound, and I don't mean this to sound the way that it's actually going to sound, but I hope so. And I, and I mean that for two reasons. One, I hope that Wilf gets to play for a bigger, better uh, club at, at a much higher level. I hope that he gets to play European football and pick his skills that he's undoubtedly got against far better players out of our league. I wouldn't like to see him come and sell Ryza to sell us. And to be honest with you, I think he, the shit he gets off of, off of fans uh, in this country wouldn't surprise me if he did fancy a change for the last two or three years. And go and pick the money up, because when he's enjoying himself, he he he, he just is he's different gravy. He really is different gravy. And then the second part is that we we need the money. You know, we've are a selling club. We always have been a selling club. And until we get to be Newcastle, could have been us, or a City, or or the other big clubs where they get real billionaire investors willing to throw hundreds of millions of pounds at us um, and not, you know, not say we're going to do this and do that and don't do it um, and then pretend to, to just give us a little bit of money and then know that we have to, you know, that they're lending us money instead of using it as, you know, no one makes money out of football. No one. So, instead of using it as an investment, yeah. Yeah, you, you got. You, that's the thing with a Premier League club. I, I don't think there's any of them make money. You, you know, it's it's almost like a, a very expensive toy. Um, but but that needs to be. You know, we we need different investors with Parish at the helm. That's that. And there's again, we need that. The man is a businessman has set us up, but he just hasn't been fronted by these two American billionaires that have come in. So so. Uh, Going, uh, I just digress, but we we need Wilf's money, no matter how much it is. Twenty, well, it won't be twenty, but let's say between forty and sixty million would be a realistic price for him. I imagine we'll probably get forty-five, fifty million 
is as good as Mares, and Mares was fifty million, and maybe we'll get sixty, but with ten million, there'll be ten million in add-ons, and 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 have someone else's pants down, like Man United have had ours down with a twenty-five percent sell-on clause. Yeah. Um, but we we need to move him on. We, we we you know we need to move Wilf on. So if not, he's a he's a six six seven eight million pound thing around our neck, and that money that we need of him will just sit in the club and just go stale. Um, so, so yeah, it's uh, time to go. Catch twenty two. Thank you, mate. Um, now coming, Ben and Caitlin, you have grown up with all your lives watching Palace, and Wilf Zaha has been at the club. Will you be sad to see him go? I definitely think it will be sad to see him go, just because. As you said, we've grown up seeing him play for Palace and obviously how much he's affected the club. But he's a big thing for Palace fans and Palace fans do love him. But I just think he's at that age now where he's 28 in November, 21 in November. Mm-hmm. He's outgrown us and he, he wants to win trophies and I just don't think he will get that at Palace. I think him being an Arsenal fan as well, He's gonna. He might want to play for them as well because maybe he might get something from there. Whereas Palace, I just don't think he will. And I think, like John said, we do need the money for him. We do need money to buy younger players as well. Really good, really good. See, and that, and that's why I asked you guys to come and join us because you're giving it to us. You guys are giving it to us from a different standpoint, and I'm really grateful for this. Ben, will you be sad to see him go? I am. Like, obviously, sad to see him go because how much he's helped us. But I think it would be more sad like two, three like, years ago. Because obviously, he's wanted to have the club for a while. So it's like he, he doesn't really want to be with us anymore. So it's like, well, if you don't want to be here, I'll just leave already or something. Perfect. Perfect. Kaylin, um, Kels, how much do you think is a realistic price point? Gel's just been quoting 40, 50, 60 million pounds. Do you think we're going to get that sort of money for him? I think maximum forty we get for him. I think he's uh, yeah. I think maximum forty. And don't forget, twenty five percent of that goes to, directly to Man United as well. Okay, because uh, I'm conscious of the time. Um, Benteke, Sacco, and Mayer. Have we seen the last of those guys? Gilbert's anybody in there? Lee, let's come to you. Um, what do you think about Benteke, Sacco, Mayer? We, we've already lost. Zaha, so that will be taking four of our major, major costs off our wage bill. Uh, have we seen the last of them? Well, I think with Hodgson stays, you've definitely see, seen the end of Max Meyer because he won't want to stay about because there's just Roy, Roy just doesn't give him any game time. So if Hodgson stays, I just imagine Max Meyer will be putting in a transfer request. Um, Sacco, if we get anything. Above 10 million for him, I'll take it. I know it's a loss, but we just don't, he's just not value for money anymore. I mean, he's injured. I mean, what do we, I think we've had about nine, 10 games out of him this season. And he's picking up 100 grand plus a week. No value for money. Um, Benteke, I mean, you've, you'd have to listen to offers, wouldn't you? You'd have to listen to offers. I mean, these are players who are on big, big wages who just aren't, we're, not, we're, just, we're just not getting value for money on them. But Sacco and Benteke, we're both going to lose money on them. Of course you are, for sure. I mean, um, imagine, uh, imagine. I don't know, Joe, you're, you're better at this than I am. Zaha, Benteke, Sacco and Maya, their weekly, their weekly fee they cost us, their weekly wages combined. I mean, how many players would that oh, it's be? About 30, it's about 30 million quid in wages a year. Uh, um, and also, you, you have to think that, again, what Lee just said, you... You would you would couple that with it with players going to the chairman or going to higher you know well I'd have to go to the chairman send the captain to the chairman and say look is is Roy Hodgson going to be manager because if he is I've a feeling players like uh, like Townsend I mean <laughs> Townsend goes from scoring that goal of the season being the player of the season to literally playing bit part for this season. You know, he, he was magnificent last year. Um, maybe he might have a shit attitude and Royce pulled it on him. You know, we know that Punchin's attitude was bad. He got the ump with with uh, with Hodgson for, for giving someone else the cat, you know, being told, being told he, he wasn't told that he was uh, not captain anymore. 
And I think he went, you know, the, the story I heard from a good source is that he went to Hodgson um, and said he was, weren't happy about it. And he went, like, I don't care. Get out. And then less than a month later, he's playing for Huddersfield. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, – and that comes from a good source as well. But anyway, it, 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 I, I just – I just think that uh, there's a clash of personalities um, and you can see that those players, you know, like Ben Secchi is, is integral to scoring goals when we're not scoring goals. Wolf is a shadow of his former self. Townsend, shadow of his former self. You're talking about that, that triangle, that three players, one on the left, one on the right, one in the middle. You know, that's that's, that's massive, but absolutely massive. Can you imagine if, if Ben Secchi scored just a a goal every two games, right? How good, where we would be if he was fed by Townsend and Wilf, if we literally played them genuinely as wingers that they are, right? And, and Ben Secchi up front, if they were all firing, we would, we, we definitely would have been, that game today against Spurs would have meant more than trying to end a run of eight defeats. It would have meant possibly qualifying for Europe. You know, and people go, like, people laugh about it, right? But Burnley qualified for Europe. Now, you put that into perspective. Oh, no. Right, let's, let's move it on because, I'm, again, we're, we're running late. What about incomings, guys? Okay. Um, if you read reports, so we've got, we got Ferguson on already. I think, again, very good one for the future. Um, if you look yes. at the press overnight, yeah. um, Danny Loder has signed for Crystal Palace from Reading. The youth international has been given a three-year deal announcement likely to be on Monday on, in one side. Okay. Next one you read, Danny Loder uh, is set for a shock move to Porto, holds advanced talks over a free transfer with the Portuguese giants ready to offer him a three-year deal. Um, and, so, and so it continues. So the talk in the press is it's him. It's Ezzy from QBR, Watkins, Eduardo, Loader and Ferguson. Lee, if we got all of those or even three of those, would that be a successful transfer window? I like the way we're going. Mm. But what I'm reading into that, the names that you're giving me, they aren't Hodgson signings. That's not what Hodgson buys into. So if we are going for them sort of signings, that is telling me that Hodgson's on his way. Kells, if we were to get three or four of those players in, wouldn't they? I mean, they're all championship players, all of them, okay, with the exception of Edouard, who plays for Celtic. Mm. Wouldn't that make us a a championship side, really? Um, no, I don't think it is. These are little players hungry to play in the Premiership. Um, if they come to us, hopefully they, they get to play. If we've got another manager... Um, is there a manager that we're after that's been spoken to and it's their, their players that they want in, or be brought in so Roy Hudson might be on his way and the new manager is having a say of who wants to be brought in before Whoa. he well, come in that's a good on a Lee, Lee, hold on two seconds I just want to pick up something up what Kells just said so are you saying in your mind that, that we might already be talking to somebody in the background and he's highlighted players yeah. that bring in. If that is, that is, yeah. a, that is a profound statement and something really well, worth thinking about. I never thought of that. Yeah, that's what I think. Blimey. Sorry, Lee, I interrupted you, mate. What are you going to say? No, I mean, I mean, that just, how do you know? I mean, just say scenario, if Paris, say Parrish and Dyke have been talking. I know it's probably not the sort of above ball, but who's to say, is what Kel just alluded to, that then. Them signings are not what Skype has wanted, sort of thing, or has recommended. Yeah. Recommend it. It's, some, it's something I, I hadn't even considered. It, it, it happens. It happens. Gel, any of those players t- tick your boxes? Yeah, I mean, and then, and then you can, you know, if you if you if you, if it is Deitch, and he can rob any players. For me, Woods, Woods is the kind of all action. Agro forward that we that one of the forwards that we would need. Um, yeah, I'd like to see. I, I, I mean, I'd like. To, I, I'm just trying to think that we're after all action going forward players. But if we lose um, 
you know, we if we lose Sacco, we've got to buy a centre back unless we bring Woods through. Um, and and for me, I don't think they I don't think they will if it's if it's Hodgson. Um, but we're also going to need we're probably going to need to buy at least two centre backs. Um, it it now looks like we've got Ferguson and Ward at right back. Um, I I also think that uh, although it's died down a little bit, I think PVA might have played his last game for us because there was a lot of interest apparently from him uh, for him a few months back. So um, I think I think we're just going to need to go out and and get rid of the the big name players off the wage bill um, and persuade. You know, I, you know what I'd like. I'd like us to go go to players and go look. We revolutionise. We do a lot of first in football, and we're going to go to people like Ferguson and go look. You play, and you will earn big money. If we, if A, we stay up, and B, we finish, we have we have a decent season. Player performances, you know, player performance pay. I think. I think it's the only way forward. The days of having these super agents getting players like Benteke and Sacco and, and, and the like, and then you get the, the homegrown players that come through that are regarded as their best players, like Wilf, and then he can't, you know, Benteke comes in, he's on, say, £130,000 a week, and Wilf goes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm better than him, and you need me to stay, I want the same money. Then all of a sudden, he's, he's gone from, you know, whatever, 50, 60, 80,000 to 130,000 a week plus bonuses. You know, you're looking at paying someone like him at eight million pound a year. Now, if you've got three of those in Saka, that's twenty four million. We're all pretty sure that Townsend's on round about the between eighty five and hundred thousand. You know, he's been with us a few years. You only have to you only have to go up five percent on what on what they're supposed to have 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 been, you know, given as wages eighty eighty five grand a week, and it's it's a it's a fortune. Ladies and gentlemen, so, I'm going to interrupt, I'm going to interrupt him here because his his car is getting darker and darker. He's I noticed that. In a minute, it's going to, in a minute, it's going to disappear altogether. Right before we wrap up, last thing, the Premier League has confirmed that the start and end date of the 2021 season. They said the Premier League sh- shareholders today agreed that the 2021 Premier League season uh, will commence on the 12th of September. The final match round of the campaign will take place on the 23rd of May 2021. Gilbert, any preference as to where the pre-season will be? Before I say goodnight. Well, it's going to be I, they, they can't go anywhere, can they? Tour of Ireland, yeah. Tour of Ireland. Anywhere that ticks your box, Kels? It's got to be over here, hasn't it? You can't go to any, uh, any other countries. So yeah. it, it's just got to be over here. What about you guys? Any, any thoughts? Anything you'd, you'd like to happen? Personally, I think it would be like a little four-team mini tournament at some local ground, I would think. But you got any thoughts? Wuhan. <laughs> Mate, wear your face mask. Right, Gilbert, bow me, stay there while I wrap up. I want to thank you personally for coming on. You've been superb. Uh, Ian Lyon says he thinks the pre season is going to be in Swanley in Kent. Okay, well, he's probably right. Guys, you've given up, you've dedicated your Sunday evening to us, and I am immensely grateful. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, I'm going to say good night to you at that point, if you don't mind, because I've got a couple of last things that I need to do with. The geezer in the dark over there. He looks. Oh. He's, he's, he's looking. He's shade. He's looking shadier and shadier and shadier <laughs> in that dark. So Hang on. he's gonna have, he's gonna have a copper knocking on his window in a minute, saying, "What are you doing in that car, mate?" Right. So oh. the next show, guys. Thank you and God bless you all, uh, the Gilbert family. Thanks, Watch everyone. And coming up during the summer, ladies and gentlemen who are watching or listening to this, we have some extra content for you, and unlike the other. Uh, podcast. We ain't charging you for it. Okay. Uh, watch out. We've got extra content. We've got, we've got lots of pre recorded stuff coming up. Okay. Uh, and we have got some new and exciting things happening for you when we come back. Uh, Nigel Croucher has actually asked me to ask a particular question in the chat live on the show tonight. Nigel, I'm not going to do it. Your question five, I'm not asking that question because Ian will kill me. Okay. Joe. I'm going to, unless there's anything you want to do at this point, I'm going to wrap up here. If there's anything else you want to say before I wish him all the best for the summer? No, I just, uh, 
I mean, you're going to wrap up, so you get the last word. But listen, thanks for thanks for bearing with us. It's been a uh, it's been testing at times. Um, you know, I thought oh, by now we would have got things sorted out, but we will endeavour to uh, to spend a bit more money and make things a little bit better. But but thanks for coming and, and listening to our rants and raves and enjoying in our joys and and despair. Because that is uh, that is what we do as as Palace fans, and and I appreciate the feedback we get. Um, love all the hate on Twitter; it's fantastic. But you know, I don't give a shit. So, um, <laughs> but I, I, it's been a pleasure working with with Ian and Lucy and and yourself, Nick, and um, and and Sean and 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 and, and everyone else that's, that's that that helps in the backgrounds because like like Nick has said there's there's a load of people that help behind the scenes we do have you know in the double figures of of people that do stuff that you guys never hear about um that that help to make this show happen and uh, and without them it would it would literally be impossible so uh and as Bob Geldof says uh once back in the 1980s we need money give us your fucking money um, Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? He doesn't know that he's actually just stolen my. Have I just crashed you? again? <laughs> okay, again. Right. Okay. My wrap up this week was going to be, Gel, my sidekick as always. Ian Lyons, my new sidekick as always. Everybody in the background, on behalf of the whole team, I thank you for what you do for us. The questions crew, Lucy especially. Ian Lyons especially, for all your hard work. We don't just rock up on a Sunday and put 38 shows together. There's a damn sight more of it goes on. There is a list of people that we're thanking on the screen now. Ladies and gentlemen, whilst this is our last show of the season, we're not gone for the season. If anything major happens manager-wise, transfer-wise, we will come back and we will be on air telling you about it to each and every one of you. So everybody that tunes in and listens to our podcast, and there's normally a couple of thousand of you every week. I want to keep, hope you stay well, stay safe, wear your damn face masks in public, please, and look after yourselves. If you've got children, give them a hug. On behalf of myself, Nick Philpott, Jill Holyoke and the whole team, God bless you all. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hodgson out.